This is part of the VCS 5RT reactor. I'm going to cut off a section of this because the outside of that, in between this small pipe and this medium sized pipe, was where the water was flowing, the refrigerant was flowing on the this chamber and the inner chamber. This is the inner pipe of the VCS 5RT and we're going to look at the outside of it. Hi, my name is Bob Grinia and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project and we are looking at the outside of the innermost pipe of the three pipes in the VCS 5RT reactor and this is very much coated with carbon it would seem and we're going to have a look into that a little bit closer to see what else we can see so there's a big structure up there so and there's one kind of there this wasn't a collapsed pipe in this case but it was supposedly a pipe that produced a lot of excess heat what are we seeing here Nothing immediate leaps out. But this is very heavily coated material on here. What is that? That is, that's intense, that's quite large, that's 100 micrometers across. Okay, let's see what that is. Well, it definitely has a look, and we are going to see what that is comprised of on the EDX, but it is comprised of a lot of detritus in there in this crust. Okay, so we'll take an area here. I think that'd probably be pretty representative and one more here. Let's see what that tells us. <sighs> Tiresome. <laughs> oh, hello. This is fairly high concentration of calcium, isn't it? And is that titanium? Yes, titanium. The fusion of carbon and two oxygens. Interesting. That's in the central one. What have we got here? Again, we've got titanium here. And we also have a bit of nitrogen, I think. No. Carbon. Of course we've got carbon. That's copper over there, isn't it? Well, this is calcium and titanium. <laughs> what is that doing in there? Not massive amounts, mass normalization, but it's definitely a signal. Definitely there, a very tight peak. The calcium is the big winner over and above the ubiquitous carbon and oxygen. Well, that is a distinct crust. A distinct crust of material. And there's that, the phosphorus peak coming in there. Tungsten? I don't think so. Uh, maybe? No. Meh. I don't think that's tungsten. No. Oh, might be. <gasps> no, can't be. Is that their molybdenum? No. 
Really? I don't think that's tungsten. I think that's silicon. Makes more sense, doesn't it? Very strong calcium peak in this agglomeration here. Okay, I think we'll look to see if there are any other kind of structures like this, but this is definitely a large amount of material. Okay, we will look at this, that large chunk there. What else have we got? Is this more of the same kind of material? Looks like it might be. This crustacean type stuff, this crusticus. Mm, yeah, I think so. Yeah, we will have a look at this over on the EDS, EDX. Here we go. There's a sample on this very spherical object here. We'll do one on there. And then we'll do a couple of area samples. Actually, we'll do one like spot sample on that. And another one on that. And then we'll do an area sample like there. And get rid of all the nonsense that it comes up with. Again, very rich in calcium. So again, the story of this is calcium and titanium. Lots of calcium and titanium. I mean, not lots, but like 8% and 6.57% and titanium up to about two and a half percent nearly. The most of it's carbon and oxygen. Is this one of our structures here? Maybe. It's heavily smashed up if it is, but it's not quite as clear as it was on the double pipe. Is this phosphorus rich? Copper, oxygen, carbon, phosphorus, is it? There we go. We have the same structures in here. Wow and it would appear they are producing iron as well. <laughs> you see it's moved. Go back here. It's moved. No, rather, if I was, you can see it's moved. All right, so it's kind of stabilized now. Oh, can we take an image there? Uh, I'm gonna add the last sample here. But definitely it's the phosphorus and iron type scenario here and what's that it's probably the calcium isn't it and potassium yes okay we'll look out for that and it looks like it might have stabilized yeah it's not moving so much so we'll try a decent image here first ah still moving and like the carbon is spreading out it's melting but this is a blown up structure. 
and it has this spiral stuff coming in and then spiraling up there. <laughs> it's blown up. We'll do a quick sample on here. There seems to be a little ball there, but anyway, all right, quickly, we'll go here. Yes, it seems to be fairly stable now. Choir. Yep, this looks like the ticket. Not a lot of iron, but it's there. It's got the calcium, but then there's the phosphorus. It's the same kind of structure. Now the question is, is the phosphorus coming from the copper? Regardless, it's in the structure that's doing the work. Is it synthesized? Does it, is it a breakdown product of the copper? Or if it is something from the copper that's already there when it starts, then maybe you can accentuate the process by adding phosphorus. Yeah, a pretty clear peak on that phosphorus, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Let's see if we can find a better example on this VCS 5RT in the most pipe. It's really left a trail there. Oh, I wonder if that section up there is iron. I wonder, because that is kind of what you get. At the end of these tails, you end up with a bit of iron. Is it iron or copper? It could be copper, but is it iron? Let's have a look. Mm -hmm. I'll say, I'll do the establishing shot here. No, not that one. <laughs> to show that it's at the end of this blown up structure with this helical thing coming in. Oh, did we check the size on that? The head of that. Where are we? That's up here. We're looking at, I mean, it's very damaged, but is it still a 20 micron type structure? It's not far off. If you take that across there, I'd say that was not far off 20 microns. It's a little bit bigger, but then it's broken up and blown up. We'll take a quick shot of that and then we'll pull out and then we'll look to see if that iron at the end of the vortex spiral, you can see a vortex spiral over here. Let's see if that is iron. Might be copper. Okay. So the overall picture is here. We'll take a shot of that. I think it'll come out. There we go. Right. Difficult on this one because there is, it probably ran for a very long time. In fact, that's probably why we've got all the ash. Um, uh, and so there's so much layered on top of each other and layered on top of each other. This probably is something very heavy. It could be copper, but we're going to look at that first over there. Because sometimes you get these iron chunks at the bottom of the tornado deposited. Although these might just be lumps of copper. We shall see, shall we? What do you think? Do you think this is copper or do you think it's iron? Copper or iron? Place your bets. Or something heavier. Who can say? We will have a look right now. Where it's copper. <laughs> it's definitely copper. Very, very clearly copper. Not to handle him. Okay, 
that settles that. Yeah, there's just so much on this in terms of... It's been running for a very long time. Just not as clear cut as the other one. <laughs> this is a great big lump of something and it's very toroidal, half toroidal actually. <laughs> so I think we, we might actually take a shot at that and see what it is. Okay, we'll have a look at what this is, and what this is, and what these are, because they look like iron lumps. It is moving, so we've got to be quick with this. No tellurium. Just no, no, no. Not strontium, don't be silly. Calcium and titanium. That mostly carbon in that spot. This one's getting more copper, which probably means it's rolling. This one's getting more copper, which probably means it's rolling. This one here, ah, this is more like calcium and silicon. Interesting. Magnesium, is that sodium? No. That's copper. Okay, so this material here, very round, has copper, aluminium, magnesium, silicon, and calcium. That is a little strange. And is that titanium? It is. Got some iron creeping in there, very low counts. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's drifting over. You can see it's drifting over. It's a bit tedious. Anyway. Uh, we will go back here and we'll go to here and have a look around more. Lots of fragments of copper in here, isn't there? Just not as clear to see them. I mean, you can kind of get an idea that that might be one of the volibombs or the fat Oreos, but it's just not clear. What's this thing here? <laughs> So clear, is it? It's just a mess. Oh, 
very damaged. <laughs> I wonder what that is. Should we have a look? Not palladium. Don't be silly. Come on. It's just a piece of copper. Just a piece of copper. There we go. It's it's an old one. It's a biggie though. It's on the move. It's really big. That is big. Yeah, nearly fifty microns across. What is that? It's a whole crust here. It's probably just copper, isn't it? Probably just copper. Let's see. Let's see. Um, there. And a little bit of this material, which looks like a lot of carbon. And a bit of this material. Don't think that's cadmium or terbium or uranium. Definitely not, it's making titanium this thing. Very much likes make, making titanium. Which is the fusion of carbon and two oxygens. Very little copper left there. Just 1%. Plenty of copper in that piece, that is copper. That's what copper looks like. <laughs> Calcium and titanium. Very little copper there. Just to go back to that crust for a minute here. If you look at this in atoms, this material here, here, is nearly 70%. Uh, copper. I imagine that that's missed that. It's moved a bit. So this is predominantly carbon. Really is a thick crust of carbon. A lot of carbon. Hmm. 
Hmm. Huge amount of carbon. There's a real Swiss roll. That looks like one of the inputs. It's like a big cigar or something else. Can't be certain that it didn't come out of cutting, but it has one of those structures on top. So, maybe not. Okay, I think that's enough for that. It's a little tough to find things, but we found that definitely there was a lot of carbon produced, it would seem, and that the one that we did find exploded had phosphorus in its outside. <clears throat> couple of structures here. We'll see if they are phosphorus rich and then there's another structure over here. We'll see what that is made of. Okay, so we will look at this one and we will do a little area on these ones. Will this have phosphorus in it? What would this be? Not tellarium. Well, incredibly, incredibly rich in calcium. Copper. And there's a bit of phosphorus there. Yeah, there's a bit of phosphorus. It's phosphorus. Well, have a closer look at this. We'll do another point, I think. Mostly carbon by weight, of course. They're just all a bit more mashed up then in the last study of the other reactor. Okay. Well, this one here has a very strong peak of magnesium. Still, it's mostly carbon and oxygen, of course. And not sodium, it's the copper. And there's some iron in there too. No, not iron. Silly me. What are we looking at there? I don't think that's silver. That's titanium, so that must be calcium, of course. Calcium and titanium. This one has the copper. That's about it. Calcium and copper in this one. <clears throat> so a lot of this material, if it's not carbon and oxygen, is calcium. And titanium. Those are the ones that we find a lot on here. Calcium, of course, is an alpha conjugate nuclei, and titanium is a fusion of ca carbon and two oxygens, which is effectively an alpha conjugate nuclei. Okay, thank you very much for your time, and I'll see you in the next video.